I've started to work on some computer vision problems again. Um, I was working on pretty much obsessed with the reinforcement learning for like five, close to five months. And now I've started to been learning how to use TensorFlow and Keras to work on uh, deep generative models. And I want to explain what I've learned so far about like a broad overview of what these are and what the different types are. Typically, we're using convolutional neural networks. Examples of this are kind of like you can visualize uh, images that would uh, activate a particular convolution kernel particularly strongly. That's kind of a way of like generating an image. Um, there's been the work with like GANs that uh, synthesize the, the human faces. And if you haven't seen this result, it's really uh, crazy. Um, and you can, there's, there's another uh, type called, uh, another type of model different from that called uh, variational autoencoders which is what I'm trying to focus on. And uh, I'm gonna come back to that. But, um, and then another example is like the deep dream images. Um, that's also based on sort of producing an image using um, a convolutional neural network. And so another example of, uh, is style transfer for, for deep generative models for images. And I want to basically take some of these examples and break down the techniques behind them and why they are like kind of group these different examples that we know into by the architecture that's creating them or by the that sort of algorithm that's being able to um, produce these. Uh, generative models are different than like what they call discriminative models which is what you people traditionally think of when they think about um, machine learning, like you're going to like put, take in an input and then produce uh, like a, some kind of classification to discriminate between these, these inputs with unknown class. In generative models, on the other hand, are about, this it, is sort of less of an objective way, uh, <laughs> easily way of like quantifying uh, their performance because the output is kind of uh, subjective, or it's like subjective how, how good it is. Um, another case, I just want to, before I forget, like generative models can also exist in, in natural language processing, for example, with the use of like the, the LSTMs or the transformers where you can produce, uh, you give it some kind of text based input and have it sort of predict what's going to come after that. That's a way of like generating uh, new, synthesizing new uh, content. In the case of the style transfer in which you are taking um, an input image it's called the target image and a, a style reference image um, that you're going to use to sort of texturize the image, like the source of the texture you're trying to impose on the, the target image, and a noise image or just like an initial condition of some sort, could be just an image of noise, um, that we're going to then learn. In style transfer, uh, it has a, is in the same category, I would say, as this fe uh, feature or the filter visualization. Um, making images and textures of uh, creating images that, that strongly activate some particular filter in a, in a deeper layer of the network or in some layer of the network. Both of these methods are what use what I would call uh, image learning in the sense of like image uh, iterative, you're iteratively building up an image. Starting from a, a complete noise, you start applying gradients to this image. So what in, in learning uh, TensorFlow and Keras has taught me a lot because uh, about how the, the, it's taught me ironically more, uh, made it more precise and clear in my head the mathematics of what's going on. Because what, what happens in both of these methods is that you defined some kind of loss function. In the case of the filter visualization, it would be uh, how 
it's literally just the magnitude or the, the average activation across some channel which represents um, you know over the entire image how, how strongly a fil uh, filter activates or how, how strong the output is that that filter creates at that channel so what's happening in these what I call these image learning based methods is that you are just you are applying a gradient of that loss function with respect to the input um, image and that gradient normally like in, in calc 3 and stuff you think about a gradient as like a, a vector in a space that points up the the points in the in the greatest in the direction of greatest increase of the function in this case you you can string out the the gradient um, with respect the derivative of this function with respect to the input the image the image is a tensor um, you know height by width by three for RGB images so the gradient is actually also a tensor you can think of as like adding of the same size you're adding this block to the image and then you basically you add that gradient block to the image and then you then repeat the process where you send that new input with the slightly adjusted pixels back through the network and then you up, compute another gradient with the, and, and apply it to that image again. So it's just this repeat, a cyclic process of uh, adjusting this image based on how strongly it activates um, a channel in the network. That's for feature visualization or the filter visualization.